Hello sailors, this is the Dodger Kebab and you're watching a video about games Blizzard made before Warcraft. When I say Warcraft, don't just mean World of Warcraft, no, I mean Warcraft 1, My Scum vs Master Race. Yeah. So the first Warcraft game came out November the 23rd, 1994. But what gaming gems did Blizzard release before this? Well, there was five games that Blizzard released, and I'm going to take a look at all five of them. Something else that you might not know is that they were not always called Blizzard. They were actually called Silicon and Synapsis, and it was under this name that they released their first game called RPM Racing on the Super Nintendo in 1991. RPM Racing stands for Radical Psycho Machine Racing, which couldn't be any more 90s if it featured the cast of Saved by the Bell. This game was pretty much single-handedly coded by Alan Adam. Adam? Adham. Adam? Adham. <laughs> by him in just five months. Alan? Adam? Adam and Ham is now the senior vice president of Blizzard. But like I said, this game was made when they were still called Silicon and Synapsis, and this was their first ever game, but it's a bit pony. So as the awful game title suggests, this is a racing game. One where you drive the most sluggish car known to man around an isometric course which is blander than feminist pornography. There are four cars in each race, although it's easy to build up a huge lead, you'll probably only ever see the car that is in second place, and most of the time that'll be because the game is a four split screen with no option to turn it off. Now to be totally fair, this game is actually a remake of another studio's game that came out in 1985 on the Commodore 64, that was called Racing Destruction Set. So was this some sort of brilliant game that deserved a remake? No. That was garbage too. But that sound though, sure your eyes were not having a fun time, but your ears were just being raped. It's not like the Commodore 64 couldn't do good music. Last Ninja 2 proved that. Yes, RPM Racing is a janky mess of a game, but considering the next game from Silicon and Synapsis was only six months away, something tells me that most of the team was actually working on that, and RPM was just a pet project of Alan Adam 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 Haddam that he really wanted to make, because their next game would prove to be very popular indeed. The Lost Vikings was released May 1992 and is a puzzle platform action game where you control three Vikings, each with different play mechanics. The idea is simple, reach the exit of the end of the level, but you'll need to use each Viking's abilities to overcome the various traps and puzzles in each level. The intro actually gives a good idea of the main game mechanics. So the Viking with the shield is placed in front of the bad guy when the Viking with the offensive weapon is selected and then brought forward to deal with that bad guy. You may be wondering just how lost these Vikings are. Well, they're in fucking space. Yes, your three Vikings are on board what appears to be a spacecraft, and you'll have to find the way out of each level that leads them onto another part of the spacecraft. So you'll be dealing with buttons that need to be pressed by long range weaponry, lasers that need to be blocked by a shield so the others can pass, and many puzzles that play to the abilities of one or more of the Vikings. The puzzles are not too hard that you have no idea how to even go about solving them but not too easy as to make it a cakewalk. If you're a well player and think you've seen these guys before somewhere, you have. In Alderman, there are three dwarfs which share the same names and style as the Lost Vikings. It's a very well balanced game that got great reviews at the time and it sold well. I think it's a good game. 
I'm inclined to agree with you, dodgy kebab. But the game that followed this was even better. Rock and Roll Racing on the Super Nintendo released the 4th of June 1993 is a phenomenal game. At first glance, it might look a bit like RPM Racing that we saw earlier, but this improves upon that game in every single area. It's fast, it controls really well, it's now full screen, it's got a brilliant soundtrack, the graphics are much better, the tracks are much more interesting, and it came with a free tissue so you had something to jizz into when you told your friends how good the game was. I I remember renting this out from the video man and then buying it the following week. If you were still a baby in the 90s then a video man was a guy that used to come round to your house with a van of VHS videos and games and you'd rent the ones that you wanted off him for the week. My guy was called Dodgy Tom and he was a fucking superhero that pulled up every Saturday afternoon with new Sega Mega Drive games. Anyway, Rock and Roll Racing pits you against three other computer controlled players on futuristic tracks and gives you weapons. Between races you you can upgrade your car using prize money. You can upgrade your handling, your top speed, your acceleration, your armor, and your weapons. I probably don't need to tell you about Blizzard's chiptune versions of the classic rock songs in this game, which are the icing on this brilliant gaming cake, which makes the next game even more strange. The Death and Return of Superman is the company's first game under the new Blizzard name. On paper, this should be great. You have Blizzard, a Streets of Rage style game, and Superman. Mix these things together and you've got a great game, right? No. This is an awful game and shows complete lack of understanding for the genre. Side-scrolling beat-em-up games live and die on three principles, music, art, and combat. These types of games, by their nature, are repetitive and simple, so to make them work, you need to hit all the three key targets. Streets of Rage, Final Fight, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are all examples of side-scrolling beat-em-ups that had appealing graphics that didn't constantly repeat, thus giving you the feel of progression. They had standout, catchy music, and they all had bad guys that had different attack patterns to mix up the gameplay. Superman has boring, bland, generic graphics and backgrounds that repeat over and over and over again. The music is one song on a loop for every level every level what were they thinking the combat is utter pony pathetic interchangeable bad guys that have about three attack patterns between the lot of them i have no idea how they went from the glorious lost vikings to the sublime rock and roll racing and then to shitting out this utter turd this game is utter garbage and in my eyes a lot worse than rpm racing i mean rpm was crap but it was their first attempt at a game and then they followed up with two cracking games in my eyes there's no excuse for this it's just bad and blizzard should feel bad for making it still at least they made up for it somewhat <laughs> Thorn is a dungeon crawler where you play as a dude with a shotgun. Its platforming gameplay shares a lot in common with Prince of Persia, which is no bad thing. You control shotgun dude as you progress through the levels, navigating platforms, collecting items and killing bad guys. On top of this trusty shotgun, you also have these little mines that you can throw around to take guys out. Plus, it's not just bad guys you can take out. See a prisoner that's been captured? Speak to him, 
get some information out of him, then blow his chest to bits. This doesn't help or hurt you, but I guess you're just putting these guys out of their misery. The controls are good, and Shotgun Guy has a few useful moves which can pull off like shooting behind you. If I was to level one complaint at this game, it would be the boring music. They've done the same nonsense as they did in Superman, and just put one shitty song on loop. Blizzard are lucky the gameplay makes up for this. If you've been paying attention to the video, you may have noticed that all these games have something in common. They are all Super Nintendo games. PC gamers practically wank themselves off over Blizzard, always seeming to forget that their most beloved PC game studio actually began and made a name for themselves on consoles. Looking at their recent output, seems like Blizzard are returning home. I wonder if any future games might come to consoles too.